think they're just waiting for all the big the big boys to make their plans. <laughs> oh, that would make sense though. All right, um, we can go ahead and get started. And uh, it's not a lot of material to cover this week. Uh, we're just going to finish up uh, resurrection and ascension. Um, so why don't we go ahead and pray, and then. Um, <laughs> Emmett made ice cream. Oh. Oh, wow. We use, we use the mint in our yard. Cool. Really good. All right. Let's pray. Lord, Father, we thank you for this time. We pray that you would um, watch over us and give us wisdom as we, um, as we study this, the last, this last section of um, uh, the Ascension and help us to understand um, the the full ramifications of everything that um, happened in the uh, in the ascension when you left um, left earth to go to uh, sit at the right hand or when Jesus left to sit at your right hand um, and uh, how we eagerly await his return. We pray these things your son's name. Amen. Okay. Um, so we had, we were talking about the resurrection up until um, up until now. Um, the ascension. So the resurrection, as we know, is um, represented by that period of time between uh, uh, between the uh, the cross and and when Jesus Jesus ascends into heaven uh, in the Book of Acts. And uh, um, the there are a lot of ramifications to that the kind of body he had and all, you know, like all the stuff that we had discussed in the past couple of weeks. But then the, the next step naturally is um, after he was done with those 50 days or whatever, 40 days. No, it was less than that. It was only, it was only a few days um, where he was here on earth. Then he ascended into heaven and the, the disciples go into this waiting period before Pentecost. So um we're gonna look at the ascension as a as kind of a, a an event, but also as a concept. Like, what what um, are, are there are there bigger issues at play when we talk about the ascension? So, um, but first off, one of the things that we can establish right away is that Jesus actually went to a place. Um, he did not. It was not that he. Uh, just vanished like like all he said okay i'm done and then boom he's gone uh like he he disappeared into the ether he actually went to a place and so what is this place um you know people call it heaven people call it the throne room of, of heaven you know or with the father um there are examples throughout scripture and they're listed here um where there are references to this location um Elisha. Oh, so it, it is this spiritual place that nobody can with, with earthly eyes can see. So um, in Second Kings, Elisha, uh, surrounded by an army of angels, army of angels and chariots of fire, protecting him from the Syrians at Dothan. This is uh, an opportunity for humans to see um, briefly that a spiritual world exists. Okay. Um, Stephen, uh, right before he died, um, he was granted vision to see the throne room of heaven. Um, this is right as he's being stoned and he's about to die. He gazed into the heavens and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. Acts chapter 7, verse 55 to 56. And then Jesus himself uh, refers to my father's house. In my father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? This is an actual place that Jesus had, was going to after he left earth. Um, and I think it's important for us to understand that there is a place that he is going to because, um, well, we'll see why. So um, we do have, like, like it says here, we have a few examples of when people were temporarily granted vision. Um, another one that I didn't mention here is, uh, the, basically the entire book of revelation. Uh, John has been exiled to the Island of Patmos and 
at some point he turns around and he sees the throne room. He sees this whole spectacle before him. And that whole spectacle is actually heaven. It is, it is this place that Jesus has gone to. And he sees the son of man sitting at the right hand of God. He sees the, the throne room and the elders bowing before in, in the sea of glass and all that stuff. And more often than not, um, this place, when it is described, is, is described using figurative language. It is not necessarily literal. Um, uh, a lot of John's language in the book of Revelation is, and then I saw something like a, or a beast that was all eyes. You know, like you, you, you hear the way he, he describes things and it is not necessarily literal. It is, it is more than likely figurative. Okay, um, so he ascend, He definitely ascended to a place. It's not. It's not just kind of this magical disappearing act. And all the disciples saw him rising into heaven. Right. Um, I, I I thought I had written that down somewhere, but on the actually, why don't we look that up? Uh, let's see. In the book of Acts. Book, yeah. So Acts. Yeah, Jesus taken up into heaven. So. Um, let's see this. Um, so he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power, so on and so forth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid them, hid him from their sight. They were looking up intently into the skies. He was going and suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them and said, what are you looking for? He's going to come back. So that idea that it's not that he was there and suddenly he was not. It's that he was there and then he started rising into the sky and then he went behind a cloud. Okay. And that's typically where we get the idea that heaven is somewhere up there. Okay. Not, not necessarily above us, but it is, it is, um, it is definitely a, uh, a, a place that is not on this earth. Okay. All right. Going back to our, our study here. Okay. So the Ascension, um, <clears throat> glory and honor that was not yet, that had not yet been his before as the God man. So there is a change of uh, a state of glory that happens to Jesus when he, when he descends to earth. And I think that that's something that we need to we need to be aware of, that when he came to earth, there was actually a descent that happened from, from, um, from heaven, to be sure. But I think that there was a glory, and, and you look at these passages and you see there was a, a, a state of glory that he had when he was with the Father in heaven. And then when he descended to earth, that state of glory was actually lost. And when he prays to God here, John 17, 5, glorify me in your presence with the glory which I had with you before the world was made. There was something that was there. So a glory that he had had when he was, before he had descended to earth. And, and he is expecting that that glory will be restored to him when he goes back to heaven. Uh, and we see every time that Jesus's current state is described in the New Testament after he ascends, that he is, like it says here, Acts 2.33, he's exalted at the right hand of God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, God has highly exalted him. That's, you know, um, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus, Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay. And in 1 Tim Timothy 3.16, he was taken up in glory. Okay. Guys, can you go play somewhere else, please? Uno. Okay, um, and then um, not only was he uh, glorified in, his, in this new state, um, he is he's seated at the right hand of God. Um, the Bible is very specific to tell us that Jesus sat down at the right hand of God. It was predicted in the Old Testament, Psalm 110, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And then when he made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Um, and um, this, the, the, the significance of the right hand, uh, the significance of sit, being seated is, is a couple. We talked about the significance of being seated as the 
Did we do that. We talked about. Um, yeah, uh, we talked about that earlier about how wit, because he is seated, there's a sense of finality to uh, to the the job that he was he was commissioned to do um, on Earth. So when he ascends back to heaven and he is seated at the right hand of God, there's a there's a sense that I am done. Um, it is finished, right? <clears throat> no more work to, yet to be done. And so uh, you get the you get the sense that if he were if if he were still standing and if he were uh, still working, that the job was not yet done. Okay, um, he's set, seated, and then the right hand is the, the side of power, right? The, the strong side. And so when you're seated at the right hand of any ruling figure, you are um, you are the 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 second in command, as it were. Um, incidentally, um, the seated at the right hand of God is actually, um, sometimes referred to right here. You see it on the top Christ session. Um, uh, so my in-laws are, they go to San Bruno Chinese church over in, uh, um, on the peninsula and they are a Southern Baptist church and the, the Southern Baptist, you, you know how we have deacon meetings, right? We have our deacon, deacons council and we have our pastoral council. And then, um, and that's, that's basically the name that we have given to, um, to that level of leadership at our church. They call theirs when they, when, they, uh, when they have their meetings, their monthly meetings, they call it the session. Um, they, I'm going to go sit in session. And, and so it, it's kind of interesting to see that uh, how certain terms have passed through tradition and generations to say, um, we, are seated, we are seated in a position of leadership. So we are seated in a session, the session of the Southern Baptist Convention, not the session of God, but um, I found that interesting when I stumbled across this. Okay. Um, and then from that position of the right hand of God, he had been given authority to pour out the Holy Spirit on the church. Acts chapter 2, being therefore exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this which you see and hear. So this is um, Acts chapter 2. This is the um, Peter's, Peter's sermon um, from the balcony after, the, after Pentecost, right? After the Holy Spirit had descended on, on the tongues of flame and all that stuff over their head, that this is... Um, Peter saying that this is actually from God through Jesus that we see uh, this this pouring out of the Holy Spirit. So the authority had been given to Jesus from from that position. So, um, so doctrinal significance of the ascension in our lives. So we see, we see that this is it's definitely it's definitely true that he. He rose to a place, and from that place, he has a glory. He has authority. He has um, he has, he has um, power, and there's a finality to that, at least to that that uh, portion of of the um, of, of the redemption plan. But since we are reunited with Christ in every aspect of the work of, redem of redemption, Christ going up to heaven actually foreshadows our future ascension into heaven with him. So we who are alive, we who are left shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet them with the Lord in the air. And so sh we shall always be with the Lord. First Thessalonians 4, 17. So this is talking about um, when, uh, when Jesus comes back, there's going to be a remnant that has not died yet. That is still a, a avid followers of Jesus Christ. We shall be, those people sh who are left shall be, caught up together, raptured together to meet them in the clouds of the Lord in the air. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and seated at the right hand of God. His ascension to the right hand of God is becomes our goal. That becomes our, our fixation. That when we are looking through the lens of this life, we are looking towards Jesus. And so all of our effort, all of our perseverance, all of our struggle and our suffering is with God, Jesus seated at the right hand of God in mind. Okay. So because, because we are 
because we are united with Jesus and his death foreshadows our death, his resurrection foreshadows our resurrection, our, his ascension actually foreshadows our ascension. Okay. Jesus's ascension gives us assurance that our final home will be in heaven with him. And again, the same passage from John 14. In my father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you, so on and so forth. Jesus went ahead for a reason. He's preparing a place for all those who would call him God, that would, call, that would recognize him as Savior. Okay, so this, his ascension actually is, it's, 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 a, it's almost a guarantee. It is a guarantee that, when we die, that there is a place ready for us. Okay. So, and because of our union with Christ and his ascension, we are now able to share, we are able to share now in part in Christ's authority over the universe. And we will later share it more fully. Okay. Let me explain this. God raised us up with him and he made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus from chapter Ephesians chapter two. He who conquers and keeps my works to the end, I will give him power over the nations and he shall rule them with the rod of iron as where earthen pots are broken into pieces. Even as I myself have received power from my father and he who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. And as, as I myself have conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. So these two passages from revelation, are actually in letters to the churches. He let he who conquers, so on and so forth, right? Like um, there's always this reference to the one who conquers. And it, it becomes very clear that whatever power and authority Jesus was granted but from the Father is going to be granted to us in some measure and actually is being granted to us in some measure now. Um, and because we are seated if God is seated at the right hand or Jesus is seated at the right hand of God, we're kind of on the right hand of him that we are going to receive the power and authority by proxy that Jesus has received from God, the father. Okay. Actually, that is all we have. There is a, a short, short little section that I had about um, the states of Jesus, like, ascended dis descended ascended resurrected and but it, it was it didn't really it didn't really seem to connect to anything else so i just left it alone um but suffice it to say that res resurrection and ascension are kind of tied at the hip if they if if um if resurrection does not happen ascension does not happen right um and we've we've seen in our study in the past few weeks that actually resurrection and ascension are actually very essential elements to the uh to the gospel message if not for resurrection then death is not conquered and if death is not conquered then we got we got bigger problems um and then the ascension actually cements our future it it allows us to see that our this life after we after we die here or jesus comes back whatever happens first is is actually going to result in a a final destination somewhere other than here. There is a home that is waiting for us because if Jesus had just up and vanished and said, I'll unvanish in a, in a, in a few millennia, then that actually does not do much to secure our future. It just, all that we know is that Jesus can, can vanish and reappear whenever, whenever he wants to. So with, with, um, with the Ascension, we know that, Oh, there, there is a, there is another place. There, there's a, a place wholly other than than Earth that we are going to. Okay, so resurrection, ascension, both essential elements of doctrine to the uh, to the gospel message. Um, yeah, and that's it. Um, kind of a short, short ending to to this. I, I think there was more time spent on resurrection than than on ascension but it is more it is far more complicated and there's more material to uh to the 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 resurrection than there is to the ascension um coming up next week let me very quickly look and see what's coming up next um oh. let me see so 
We just finished Resurrection and Ascension, so the next section is going to be the offices of Christ. Interesting. Okay, so prophet, priest, and king. So uh, we're going to be looking at Jesus as prophet, we're going to be looking at Jesus as priest, and we're going to be looking at Jesus as king. And then after that, then we're going to go into the Holy Spirit as well after that. So, um, and unless I hear otherwise from Eddie, uh, I'm just going to keep going, <laughs> keep teaching these until, until uh, church gets back together. Again. But I was talking to Theo earlier today. I was like, is it possible that we're looking at like spring 2021 before we actually get back together again? But <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Keep praying. praying. Maybe Jesus will come back and then none of us will matter. All right, let me uh, let me close this in prayer, and uh, and then we can get out of here. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for um, uh, this relatively short lesson about uh, the ascension and how uh, you ascending in or you your son ascending into heaven. Um, is a it is a rather short piece of doctrine but it is actually quite essential uh, to our understanding of this life this uh uh how how this life is going to transition to the next uh how we go from temporal to eternal and um we thank you for that we thank you that you've given us enough indicators where we can have assurance uh, but also we thank you for the curiosity that you have granted each one of us uh, to investigate these things on our own. Uh, help, help reveal to us the truth uh, as we go day to day. Um, give us patience, give us health, uh, give us strength to get through um, the, the, the difficult times that we find ourselves in now. Um, <clears throat> and I pray that uh, you would be with all of the people who are working hard to uh, bring an end to the pandemic. Um, give them rest, give them wisdom, give them uh, uh, perseverance and and uh, and give them health as well. And thank you for everything you give us. Help us stay cool today in the heat and praise things for Sunday. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you next. Okay.